Welcome to the chat, and I believe we're gonna have a fantastic time. It's gonna be awesome. You see, I look so cool because I got my cap, man. So it's gonna be amazing. And make sure that you focus. Don't allow your friend to play with you, to talk to you, or anything. Just stay focused because it's gonna be amazing. God is going to bless you. And don't forget that later we're gonna be playing. You know, we enjoy playing as kids. Yeah. Anointing 
I hope you all enjoyed that moment of worship. Right now, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you very much for this time we just had with you, Heavenly Father. And we just pray right now, Heavenly Father, that as the word is, is about to be preached, Heavenly Father, that you may open our hearts, that our hearts may be receptive and our mind may be open to your word, Heavenly Father, and that we may enjoy it as we enjoy our sweets, as we enjoy playing with our friends. We may enjoy your word the same way, Heavenly Father. We just pray all of this in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. This story about spies is found in the Bible in the book of Joshua. It teaches us to trust God rather than be afraid. God told Moses that it was time for the children of Israel to go to the good land he had promised their ancestors. Choose 12 men to spy out the land, God said. The 12 men went to Canaan and saw how well everything grew. The cows were fat and the corn tall and the gardens were full of fruit, trees and hives of bees. And the grapes on the vines were the biggest they had ever seen. Two men carried bunches of grapes on a branch to show Moses. But when the spies saw the big walls of the city, they were scared and said, We could never live in this land. The people will be too strong and will fight us. They went back and told Moses all they had seen. The walls of the city are too high and the men in Canaan are as big as giants. They would be too strong for us, they said. But Joshua and Caleb showed Moses the figs, grapes and pomegranates, which grew so well in Canaan. This is a good land God has shown us, they said. There is milk and plenty of honey too. God has always looked after us since we came out of Egypt. Let us trust God to give us this good land as he has promised. Hello, boys and girls. So good to be with you all again this Sunday. And guess what? Today we are going to be looking at something really, really incredible. And that is how God sees you. Yes, how God sees you. You know, we often think that God sees us the way we see ourselves. Hmm. And how do we see ourselves? Well, if you've been cheeky or disobedient, then you automatically would think that God sees you in your sin and He's disappointed with you. Well, you can often think that God sees us the way other people see us or the way we think other people see us. So if people don't like us or treat us badly or say bad things about us, we think God thinks exactly the same way about us. And then because we think that God sees us so negatively, we run away from Him or we hide away from Him instead of running to Him when we feel bad about ourselves. We just celebrated Easter. Easter is such a special time as Christians because Jesus was arrested for doing something He did not do, right? And He was crucified on the cross. He died and then was placed in a tomb, all right? And a big rock was rolled in front of the tomb. All right, so no one could get inside. However, on the third day, when the woman came to the tomb, the big rock had been moved away and an angel told the woman that Jesus was no longer there because he had been raised from the dead. Now, can you imagine how excited they were? Jesus is not dead. Three days ago, Jesus was dead. Jesus is not dead. What wonderful news. Jesus is alive. And it's wonderful news for you and me too. Yes. Yes, it's so exciting. Now, let me explain how God actually sees you. I want you to make a cross with your fingers and put it in front of your eyes. And I'm going to show you how to do that, right? So like that. Okay. Now, I want you to put it in front of your eyes like that. Can you see? Let me put my mic down. So in front of your eyes, what you can see is the cross. Now, when God looks at you, He sees you through the cross of Jesus. And He sees that the blood of Jesus has washed away all your sins. So He sees us as completely forgiven. 
All right? So now, I want you to say this with me, all right? We're going to say it three times, okay? Come, let's say it together. Say, by the blood of Jesus, all my sins have been forgiven. Come on, say it with me again. By the blood of Jesus, all my sins have been forgiven. We're going to say that one more time. Come on, let's do it together. By the blood of Jesus, all my sins have been forgiven. Awesome. Now, in the Bible story that we've just done today, instead of seeing themselves the way God saw them through the cross, which means that they were forgiven and victorious, they saw themselves as little grasshoppers. Oh my goodness. And because they saw themselves as little grasshoppers, they saw themselves as defeated by the enemies. God doesn't want us to see ourselves through the enemy's eyes or even through our own eyes. He wants us to see ourselves like He does and that is through the cross. Okay? Awesome. That means you are forgiven. And because we are forgiven, we are winners. Yes, we are victorious. Yes. So let's shout together. Come on, where you're at right now, I want you to say, I am a winner. Come on, say it again. I am a winner. Last time. I am a winner. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. I heard all those incredible victorious shouts. That is just amazing. So let's put the cross in front of our eyes again. And remember that that is how God sees us. Okay, let's do that together. Remember, God sees us through the cross. God sees us through the cross. That is incredible. We're going to pray together, all right? You're going to pray with me? All eyes closed. Come on, let us pray. Say, thank you, dear Jesus, that you see me as forgiven. And that you see me as a winner. I love you so much. Amen. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. Isn't that incredible? I hope and pray that you really, really believe what you have heard today. Because you are going to step out and live an incredible, victorious life. Amen. Amen. All right. So we are going into the really cool part of Active Children's Church. And I'm going to hand you over to Joshua and Caleb's Corner. All right. And I will see you next week. Boys and girls, love you lots. Bye. Okay. So today for our activity on Joshua and Caleb's corner we're gonna make little bookmark crosses but we're gonna do something fun are you ready yeah. oh okay, cool. crosses so this is what we're gonna need we're gonna need paper some wool then we're gonna need this kind of glossy tape so you can take it off okay but you're gonna see what we're gonna do with it just now we also need some colors you can do oil pastels you can do crayons you can do anything you want to and a ruler and scissors we're gonna first make our cross so we're gonna do this this is just the right kind of width okay so we're gonna do that and we're gonna do this okay then we're going to do this so we're going to make a cross like that. So we're not going to use the full length of the page. We're going to do that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut that piece out. Cross. So once we have our crosses, we're going to sellotape or we're going to tape our cross to the table. And I'll show you how. You can use any color paper, you can use white paper, yellow paper, yellow paper, red. Okay, we're going to do this. Oh, blue.
So now we get to color in. So our crosses are stuck to the table, but now we're gonna color them in. You can use glitter, colors, anything you want. Yeah. Take it off. No. Yes. Yes. So here it goes. Nicely, slowly. Wow. Slowly. <laughs> Just don't touch the yellow. Yeah. Wow. Don't those look hey so now we're gonna take our piece of string and we're gonna stick it in there so we can have our little book Life and 